the world certainly changed, and so did ours, with a remarkable movie called Sling Blade. It has a very interesting genesis. Where and when and how was that character born? Well, that's, that's something... Uh, what's really great about this show is you could just say exactly what happened, you know what I mean? This character is based on two different ones sort of morphed together. One was black, one was white. Uh, the, the look and the walk and the mannerisms came from the black one. The situation came from the white one. Uh, he was literally fed like a dog out back of his house. And the guy actually, uh, he was very good to me when I was a kid. The, the actual voice that I use in it and the look really did come about because I was doing a movie for a cable network. And I was playing a railroad conductor in the 20s, and they'd given me this stupid-looking haircut, and I had a wool suit on that came up to about here. I looked like a cue ball, and they put this really white makeup on me. And I was looking at myself in the mirror, and I thought, wow, you really look ridiculous. And I was feeling really bad about myself. So uh, I started making faces at myself, and then I did, uh, uh, as God is my witness, the whole opening monologue to Sling Blade, I did it in the mirror right then, the whole thing. And I had no idea where it came from. I just did it in the mirror, the whole monologue. And then I started doing it in the theater. I wrote a one-man show and I did all these characters in the show. Is the face prosthetic? No. The, it's you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah <it's me. laughs> There's no prosthesis. I've never used any prosthetics. How did you, how did you do it? It hurts. It really <laughs> hurts bad. The voice also hurt, so I always had like chloroseptic spray and stuff like that. I had to spray my throat. The face, you just put your jaw forward. It's just... Can you do it now? Can I do it? Oh, yeah. Would you? <laughs> and, and when you do that, then how do you produce the voice? It comes out. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember the first few lines of the monologue? Oh yeah, you know what? This is so funny because you know I never will do this, but this is kind oh, of a yeah. uh, this are, is kind these of are students. yeah I know because you guys are you guys are like you know, but I mean I could never do this on like a TV show or something. But it's like uh, I uh, I think it went uh, but I reckon what you are wanting to know is what I'm doing in here. Mm -hmm. Well. I reckon the reason I'm in here is because I kill somebody. Mm. <laughs> it's very strange to do that. It feels very strange to do that. Thank you very much for doing it. Where did his mm-hmm come from? You know, I got that really, I used to work in a nursing home and I worked around a lot of really old people. And there was this one guy who would say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out and ride out there this afternoon, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna go to horse races and then I'm gonna kill you and then I'm gonna, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I'm gonna, you know, like that. <laughs> and, uh, and so I kind of got that mm-hmm from him. <laughs> the mm-hmm is extraordinary. It's oh, people in the hardware store will still do that to me or wherever I go. Yeah, I'm oh, going to sure. McDonald's. Yeah, I'll have like a thing of fries and they'll go, mm-hmm. No, like, yeah, right. I get it. <laughs> you know, the two major themes that I wanted to talk about in that movie were religion and, uh, well, prejudice. Is religion a bad thing? No, religion is not a bad thing. The root of all religion is a good thing. Uh, but it depends on whose hands it gets in. So, tiny movie, but kind of bigger themes, and that's how I have chosen to, to live my life in this sort of business, is by telling personal stories rather than sort of broad stories. Because if you tell them, this movie's about racism, so we want you to come see it, so we have this huge $98 million movie and all the big stars are in it, and we're gonna talk to you about racism, well, the racists won't come see it. Mm -hmm but the racists will go see Sling Blade because <laughs> yeah. they just think it's about this goofy guy and they love it. Uh, yeah, yeah. But subliminally, you know, I think they get something. You know what I mean? So that's kind of the way I choose to do it. 
Well, I went in there in the house, and I hit Jesse Dixon upside the head with it, knocked him off my mother. I reckon that didn't quite satisfy me. So I hit him again with it in the neck with a sharp age and just plumb near cut his head off. Killed him. My mother, she jumped up in there and started hollering, what'd you kill Jesse for? What'd you kill Jesse for? Well, mm, come to find out, I don't reckon my mother minded what Jesse was doing to her. I reckon that made me madder than what Jesse'd made me. So I taken the Kaiser blade. Some folks called it a slang blade. I call it a Kaiser blade. And I hit my mother upside the head with it. Killed her. I understand that you wouldn't agree to the feature version un until and unless you could direct it. Well, there was never any question that, uh, you know, I was going to do it. Uh, they couldn't really afford to get anybody to direct it. Were you prepared to direct a movie? Did you know lenses? I learned about lenses. I learned what my favorite ones are. I, I mostly, uh, I usually shoot close-ups with wide-angle lenses. I like the way it looks. I like a face right out here, like it's almost coming out of the screen, and yet you got the whole world behind you there. I also have actors look directly in the lens on close-ups, as opposed to eye line, you know, things like that, because I never could figure that one out. They always say, well, no, you can't do that, you know. Well, why can't you do that? Well, because you gotta, you know. And I said, yeah, but I mean, when you're looking at somebody, you're looking them in the eye, yeah, but you're breaking the fourth wall, you know. What wall? <laughs> Tell me something about Carl. Why does he continually rub his hands together? It's like washing away the bad stuff. The rest of the time, his hands lie dormant oh, yeah. at his sides. Very unthreatening look. He's a gorgeous man. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's really, that's, I mean a, that's interesting he's, he he's, says that. He's a, he's a gorgeous character. Well, you know, I'm, you know, it's really nice that you say that because I happen to uh, not place much value on uh, the looks of human beings, uh, you know. These days in a world where whoever has more posters wins, it's really a great thing to, for somebody to say that. So I'm, I'm just saying thank you for saying that, that's all. <laughs> Since you won a screenwriting Oscar for Sling Blade, I'd like to ask about your writing process. Do you write on a schedule or intermittently? I write uh, intermittently, yes. <laughs> that's, that's a good word for it. I write late at night, generally. Uh, most times uh, between the hours of midnight and six in the morning. Uh, only because I'm kind of the only guy up, usually, you know. But uh, uh, I, I write in a stream of consciousness fashion. I don't rewrite. And I usually write it all at once. I wrote Sling Blade in about nine days. To whom is that film dedicated? My, my brother. Yeah, Jimmy. Uh, he would have got it so bad, you know. I mean, if, my, if my brother saw Sling Blade, he he it would have been his favorite film ever if he saw Good. Sling Blade, yeah. Each time I prepare for an evening like this, there's a wonderful surprise, a movie 